Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start Base. We are back here again with another episode. Uh, I think I'll just address the elephant in the room. We are both recovering from some type of sickness. Uh, fair to say that the last time that we recorded, I think everybody could pick up. I was coughing in the background yeah. uh, incoherently. Uh, We're luckily at a point in my sickness where my coughing has, has dissipated for the most part. <laughs> so I might have one or two throughout the thing, but for the most part, I should be okay. Yeah, I still have a few, as maybe you guys just heard. Um, but we're working on it. But anyway, uh, we are back here today, I guess, the second video in our Road to Last of Us 2 uh, until it comes out in May. Um, we are here once again. I oh, think... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got a question for Naughty Dog real quick. Where are my Ellie editions? Where are they? Give them to me. Continue. And if not, I'll, I can, I'll, I'll stick to my collectible edition. <laughs> Um, uh, much like for those of you who have followed us from the beginning of the series with 2K20, we sort of, we played around with it before its release, like, you know, uh, top five things that we would like to see, top ten things that we would take out, top ten things that we would put in. We're basically going to be doing the same thing, but with The Last of Us Part 2, and, um, I know last time we sort of discussed how we got into Last of Us and backstory and all that. This time we're geared more towards uh, Last of Us 2, um, you know, and today's theme uh, revolves around five features that we would each like to see uh, implemented in the game. Uh, this could be anything from, you know, putting in a certain mechanic or working on something maybe in regards to graphics or, you know, AI or whatever it might be. And then for the second half of the, of the podcast, um, Dan, I believe it was your idea, you said... Uh, you know uh, how we would imagine you know the last of us to ending yeah if i mean if you started this journey with us on ba select start then you know that we're wrestling fans and if you've stuck through this many episodes of wwe uh, i'd like to think that a lot of you are probably familiar with the with the term fantasy booking which is essentially what we're gonna do we're gonna fantasy book the ending of the game uh but we each devised three endings for how we'd like to see the game potentially end. So we'll I, get to that. I, I only have mm. one right now, but who knows? I might well, get I two more. I put three, so I'll, I'll pick okay. up your slack, Shut. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, with that, uh, let's get to the task at hand. So right now we got uh, five features that we would like to see in The Last of Us Part Two, and then we'll just kind of go through bullet point and... Um, you know, elaborate on what we mean, uh, how we would like this to be in there, what it could affect, what you know, what it can, what it probably won't affect. Um, how should we start off, Dan? You want to start off, or should I start off? Uh, you, 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 you can start. So okay. I mean, a couple of mine are like aesthetic, and some are functional, and then some okay. are story based. So okay, no I got problem. sort of a mixed bag. So it's okay. What you got? All right. So my first one is I have an implement crouch mode mm -hmm. seen in the Last of Us demo. Allow for the player to embark on levels differently each time they play. Staying too long in this position increases chance of being detected. So if, uh, if you guys actually go, it's still on YouTube, you can see the Last of Us demo uh, for the first one. Um, they actually had a crouch mode where, you know, Joel you know, slightly crouches over and he kind of runs. Um, and then when the game came out, it was either you're standing or you're bent on one knee and you're sort of, you know, walk, uh, you know, moving around. And I feel like that crouch mode is kind of a medium of the two where it's like if you kind of want to get past, but because sometimes you really have to time it. You know, when an enemy starts walking away, you know, Joel starts slowly moving. But if there's a crouch mode, you can kind of, you can play around with it. Yeah. Do I want to crawl? Do I want to crouch? Or do I just want to run? Um, and again, this should have pros and cons. For example, if you're in this position for too long, there's a high chance of being detected, as opposed to if you're crawling down and no one can see you, you're behind a box or something. Yeah. So that's something that I would love to see in The Last of Us 2. And they kind of, they experimented with this because apparently Ellie now, she can crawl or she can get on, you know, her stomach and kind of use her elbows yeah. to to go so maybe that's that's what they're experimenting with but this is something that i would love to see in the second yeah and second from game. and from a gameplay standpoint and <clears throat> like there's two, there's a, two things I, I i like about this and it's it gives you different le like <laughs> from 
for lack of a better term, levels to play on. Yeah. Because then you can do that. Like if she's got a crowd, if she's got a crawl, a crouch, and a and a standing, then it gives you more control over how yeah. you hide, how you move, what you what you do. And so I think the idea of potentially having it where she can just get down and she can crawl, and you know you see her go under a car. Yeah. In the in the demo yeah. trailer, and I think it would be really cool if that wa- if there were elements. And I, I don't want it to be, like, part of the thing necessarily, where they're like, oh, and you've got to get down on your hands, and you've got to get down on your stomach, and you've got to crawl through this thing, or that's the only way you can get through. Yeah. At least not overkill. Yeah. But um, I think just having those things scattered throughout the environment is yeah. going to make it more of a di- dynamic game exactly. experience, and I think that'll be really cool. Instead of just linear doing the same thing each time, you yeah. know, if I want to get past this part, I have to go under the car, and then I have to get out, you know, so, yeah, that's my first feature. Um, so then I, for the first, this is, this is a functional but also superficial thing, uh, a wider array of melee weapons... Okay. Like and th- this ties into another thing where I have sort of a uh, discoverability component in this game, and now these aren't all things that I n- need in the game for it to still be enjoyable. But I think it would be cool if you can if you can find new items throughout the game in various places, and it allows you to use them. Yeah. Like you had the like you had the bricks, you had the bottles, bottles. You had the the sticks and pipes. I pipes, believe. yeah. And I don't recall. Do, like at any point, do you actually get to use a a machete? Yes, I think it's for the ranch house <coughs> uh, scene yeah. where Joel goes looking for. Like, that's really the one place that I recall you can find it. But it's not. It's not like a, a brick or a bottle where you can find it anywhere. It's kind of a rare item to find. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm saying is I'd like to see. I'd like to see a little bit more variety. Yeah. Like. Uh, Instead of just bricks and and bottles, uh, let me grab uh, I don't know a item off a counter in a house and I can throw that. Yeah. Just miscellaneous things yeah. because it, it, it I again I think it adds to just sort of the the dynamicness of the universe. Yeah. If I'm not restricted to oh well Joel only knows how to throw these two things but <laughs> you put a bar of soap in his hand and he's he's screwed. <laughs> But, like, I should be able to pick up a, a, a toy or a lamp or something and just, and just lob it, yeah. and it should it should let me. I think that would be kind of a cool add-in, functionally. Very funny you bring that up. It's not the second thing here, but there's actually a feature that I, it kind of calls back to what you're saying, so I'll, I'll bring that up. Um, yeah, I think that uh, more melee weapons, because if the, uh, Last of Us, it's not exactly, you know, uh, shoot, shoot, bang, bang, you know, get through it. So, you know, there's there's some action, there's some melee involved, so to have, you know, uh, more variety of weapons, it would be pretty cool. Yeah, because like, like going back real quick to the Dead Island game that I talked about, there's all kinds of melee weapons you can get. You can get a bat with nails, and I know the, this, that's like a zombie game. Yeah. But like, you can get a bat with nails in it. You can get a variety of swords or knives. You can get a bunch of machetes. You can get uh, just normal bludgeoning weapons like pipes. There's a whole whole ton of stuff you can do, and you don't need to go all fanta- like fa- fantasy with it, where you're going, oh well, I found an electrified da, 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 da. lightsaber. Yeah, but like <laughs> I should be able to grab something. Like I'm just gonna look around where we are at. Like a pan. I should be able to get a pan or. Uh, a picture frame, and I should be able to throw that. Chuck it, or use yeah. Weapon. But go on. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> my second feature: uh, cutscenes are not default. If character is shot or hit, allow this to be visible in the cutscene or changing of clothes. So let me elaborate on that. I think this was done in Uncharted Four. Yeah. Where let's say if you unlock some skin for Drake and and you change his gear um, or his attire, and if the, if a cutscene plays, he's in, in that yeah. in that as opposed to the the default. Um, or let's say if this is, it's kind of like, it depends on how you go about the level. Let's say if I stealth through the level and I haven't been hit, I'm not bruised or anything. When the cutscene plays, I'm clean. However, if I decided to just run through the level and I got hit a few times, maybe my arm is bleeding or, you know, whatnot. I would like to see that in the cutscene where, you know, if Ellie gets hit in the arm, all of a sudden in the cutscene, her arm is bleeding, you know? Um, so I, it's just, it's cause I would always feel like when I would have, cause in last of us one, I would always change clothes, you know, cause to kind of spice things up, 
you would change the clothes and like Joel I would give him you know the red plaid shirt and the military backpack cutscene comes it's the green plaid shirt with the old rotten backpack yeah, and it's it, like it would just go to it, mm. it, it would break continuity yeah exactly because then you'd go back and now you're back now you're outfit. back to the yeah um, so. and w- w- it sounds like you're describing wear and tear Exactly. So yeah. as you get injured or roughed up, if, like because if you're getting hit, if you you get into a fist fight with somebody, there there would naturally be either some dishevelment or yeah. bruising, or you're getting sweaty from the exertion, right? Yeah, and that should carry that over. That should carry over. It, it it's just the those small details. Small things. Yep. I agree. That's I think that would be really cool. Um, I'll I'll jump down to the third one on my list because it kind of ties into what you just were talking about. You you're talking about the skins. Skins. Um. I think it would be an interesting component if throughout the journey there's outfit parts scattered places okay. that you can acquire. Okay. Um, and this this is a this is again this is not something that I was like oh you know what Naughty Dog probably put this in the game. I'm just saying if I if I had control over some of the development of the game, this is a neat little thing I might consider putting in there. Where if you're going through a, a city or a neighborhood or you end up in an apartment or something, you can find a different shirt in the right. apartment yeah. and then you can wear that. Yeah. And then, and maybe like maybe even that's how you will unlock the unlock skins. Unlock things. Yes. But I just think it would be it would, it would be fun if absolutely. you can change your outfit that way. Yes, absolutely agreed. I think that's fun. Um, again, just spicing things up, making it different. Um, and I will actually come back to the clothes again on my very last point because it <laughs> ties into that. But my third thing, um, <coughs> branching levels, as in not having just one linear path to completing the level, allow for multiple paths to getting around an area which leads to co- completion of the level. Uh, so instead of bottlenecking you into the, the yeah of the story. Because I felt like the first Last of Us had that, where it's it's not too terrible, but it's like, oh, so I, I need to go this way. You know, I can still look around in this first area, but I eventually have to make my way here so I can go to the next yeah. part. Maybe... I th- I'm thinking... well, like for example in the in the the winter scene when you're trying to get to Ellie you have to go a specific way yeah. to really get there because it bottlenecks you into that yeah. building as opposed to like if you think of city planning if you've got a bunch of cross streets that you can yeah. follow any of those to get around right then it's better as opposed to if the the city planner is purposely putting up barricades right that yeah. then keep you from following specific streets exactly no i agree i think that 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 i think that, that contributes a bit to replayability uh it, just because if there's more options and obviously we've talked about how much replayability the first one first already one has had, yeah. but if you have the freedom to explore new new channels or just approach a game a different way, yeah. then you go, oh, okay, I, I, I dig it. I'll, I'll play it again. Right. Yeah, so that's me. Um, so then I'll jump back up to more dynamic environment. And so what I mean by that is <coughs> I don't recall... Now, this this might be a bit of a stretch because none of our characters are necessarily, like, fit fit people... But I likened it to uh, the the to the Uncharted games as to how you can scale places and get to places. I'm not saying give me a grappling hook. Yeah. But I don't recall in the first one any moments where you're able to like look at um, like a wall that's broken up and you can scale it individually. Yeah. Right. You had to find the ledges. You had to have help. You had to have a ladder. Because you, you had to have what was it? It was you had to get Joel up top, and then he would reach down and pull Ellie up on yes. hands, right? Yep. And I I think if you and especially now that she's older and she's supposed to like I feel like we're supposed to absorb her as being very capable. Yes. If she has just developed the free climbing skill where she can get over things and there's alternate uh, environmental interactions, I think that'd be really yeah. Cool. Uh, speaking of which, I think there was a clip from uh, gameplay footage where she actually uh, is running from a bunch of enemies, and she actually climbs up a wall. Yeah. So she, like, she kind of pulls a Nathan Drake, climbs up the wall, yeah, and gets over par- that way. Parkours a little bit. Yeah. So I, th- I can suspend disbelief a little bit for that. That's fine. <laughs> That's what I like. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, definitely agreed. Um, I... Again, I wouldn't mind seeing the ladders again and whatnot, but if from time to time, if I can maybe have an alternate route, where as you said, there's a broken wall. Okay, well maybe if I can, you know, put, you know, run up and put my foot here and then you know grab the ledge and then go over, yeah. uh, it'll be a good touch. Yeah. Um, 
this kind of ties into what you were saying about the melee weapons. I actually thought about this, like, after the third or fourth time when I completed the first game. Ability to, ability to throw a weapon at humans if there are no bullets left uh, for that particular gun. This should also have pros and cons, as in if you throw the weapon, attack one human and another, another one grabs that weapon, they have the ability to load it and use it against you. But if you kill them, you get the gun along with the bullets. Yeah. So I think naturally we've all been in that scenario where... You know, you fire bullets and then, uh uh-oh, click, 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 you're out of bullets. And the funny thing is the enemies actually call it out. Oh, he's out of bullets, he's out of bullets. And I thought, what a neat feature would be if I had the ability to actually take the gun and chuck it at my opponent so that they get dazed and I can maybe go grab it. And there's there's almost like a comedic aspect to it, but it also makes sense because for that exact reason, like... Because you've seen it before in movies where people are, are like at point blank and they pull the trigger and they go... Ah, and they just <laughs> chuck it right at the person. The guy recoils, and then they they hit him or something. Yeah. And it makes sense in this situation too, where <coughs> it would be a neat feature to be able to do that. Like if you are in a level and you've killed everybody, and there's one guy left, then you chuck the gun at at him, and he gets hit in the face. He's like, oh god! And you run up and you you do the the chokehold thing, and then you're done. And then yeah. you've beaten the lo- you've cleared the the area. I think that 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 would also be kind of, uh, just a neat dynamic feature to have yeah. in there. So once again, I I want to make sure that everything because with Naughty Dog it seems like everything is very intentional. Yeah, nothing is just thrown in there like let's just throw this in there very subtly. I think everything you know has a, a intentions or a meaning behind it. So much like with the gun, if you chuck that gun and you're you're wrestling one guy trying to bring him down. If someone else grabs it, oh, hey, they have a cartridge. Maybe they can load that gun and they start using it on you. Yeah. However, if you kill them, you have the ability to, to, to get the gun along with the bullets that he loaded in. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to have pros and cons. You can throw the weapon, but if someone grabs a hold of it, it's being yeah, used it's, against yeah. you. No, so, I, I dig it. That's a, that, that, that's a, a neat uh, concept. Yeah. So that's um, my number four. So my number f- – so this is where I'm going to start to get into the story side of things. Okay. So the first side of it is I – think it would be cool um and i'll i'll be honest leading into this i never actually got into this game too much but um in things like skyrim and uh oblivion um they had side quests and i think it would be interesting if they built some side quests into this game that don't necessarily at that point you kind of have to gauge the the um urgency of the plot yeah. at certain points. So, like, you wouldn't want to have a thing where it's like, oh, Ellie's got to get to the building before they kill somebody, and then she's like, oh, I'm going to wander off on a side <laughs> quest. But I think it would be cool if you have story-integrated or story-inclusive side quests that don't necessarily have a huge impact on on your main plot, yeah. but they're things that you can step away from the main plot to do. And you you have built in cutscenes for them, yeah. so there is a payoff to these little side side stories too. Yeah. And that way, like hypothetically, if I'm playing through, and I'm like, I'm just gonna beat the main story right now. I don't, I don't, I don't want to. Yeah. This. But then I can go back later, and I can do these individual branching things, and I can see where these take me, um, <coughs> which may even play into my fifth thing. Uh, if you want to have them ultimately have an impact on the on the main plot. Yeah. But I just I, like just to have basically a tree come out of the main plot would be cool yes absolutely you know that's funny i never even thought of that i think that would be really cool you know but again it would kind of have to be to at a point where if it's your first time playing the plot is not at an all-time high where it's like okay it's kind of that calm part in the plot if they if there's a side quest okay i'll take it uh, but going back to your point, if the plot is climactic, no one's gonna step away exactly. and go, yeah, okay, let, let's just, let's do this on the side. Yeah, but going back to the, even the first one, you had sort of this like wave format where you would be going through something and it would the plot would rise. You had several climaxes throughout the plot, yeah. and so you'd get to a high point where like uh T- Tess gets bitten and then yeah. she uh, and then you're hiding in the building as all these people are trying to hunt you down, and immediately after that. <laughs> The yeah. plot kind of drops back off, and that's the right time to include a couple yes, of these. Exactly. And then once you get past that, your plot climbs again, boom, and now we're back. Yeah. So I just think that if they if they thought to integrate something like that, it's going to be really cool to, to be able to play through it. Yes, absolutely. 
Uh, my fifth one ties into, I believe, the second one that you mentioned. Um, <coughs> Which was the outfits. Yes, the outfits. Um, allow for customization options as an ability to customize clothing, ability to choose articles of clothing, for example, watches, necklaces, backpacks, etc. Weapons, suppressors, flashlight color, extra clip. These weapons can only be upgraded after completion of the game once and playing on the plus mode. Yeah. So let me break that down. So... Again, I think what kind of gives the game a, a different flavor when you play is if you unlock clothing, if you upgrade your weapons. Uh, in the first one, they had a mode where you complete the game one time, then you can play the plus mode, you know, easy plus, grounded plus, where it carries over your weapons, it carries over all the gears that you've collected. And I thought, what, how fun would it be if you can... Um, upgrade your weapon. So I know in one of the clips there was an option to put a suppressor. You know, if, if I... Last of Us, is, it doesn't really come off as a stealth type of game. I mean, you can stealth through certain points, but yeah. it's kind of... It's supposed to be chaotic. It's supposed to be, you know, uh, post-apocalyptic. But if I can get a suppressor, and then if there is, you know, a, a point in the game where it's dark, maybe I can have a flashlight, and I, and I, can, I can do that. Again, pros and cons. You use the flashlight, enemies might see you coming with that flashlight, you know, blinking. So... Uh, you know, for that, and then just, you know, like, new nuances, like, you know, if it's my second time playing, if I've unlocked clothing, like you said, I wander off into, like, you know, a store, and I see, oh, there's, you know, a top here, or you go into someone's closet, oh, there's a watch here, maybe the second time when I play, I can put the watch on, I can yeah. change the clothes, you know, just customization, kind of giving, you know, yeah, uh, the player. Can, and having it separated like that, where you can have, like, wrist accessories, yes. shirt, pants, it gives you that extra freedom to then say, oh, well, I really liked that shirt, and this, th these wristbands are really cool yeah. that book bag and you can really make the character your own exactly this uh, is just a small little thing that would sort of piss me off but uh my favorite color is red yeah so joel had a, had a red plaid uh, shirt that he would wear yeah for whatever insane reason when you would put the red shirt on he had a uh, tape on his left and right arms insinuating yeah. that he's banged up or he's been hit but for all the other ones, the purple plaid shirt, the yellow plaid shirt, there is no, no tape. Yeah. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, so I'm I'm really? choosing the beat up shirt. Exactly. <laughs> so, it, but if I can have that customization where I can have the uh, the plaid shirt be a long sleeve or a short sleeve or even cut off sleeves, yeah. you know, kind of like a, a create a wrestler thing. Exactly. Yes. Or I don't I I I don't take you for too much of a Star Wars person, but. I played uh, Battlefront, so well, just so Jedi Fallen Order that just came out recently, which is a really good game. If you're if you're interested, because it's a basically, it's like <laughs> these games, but it's Star Wars. Star Wars. Uh, you get the same thing. Like as you go through, you get different ponchos. You can uh, can upgrade the color scheme of your robot of your ship. Yeah. And then you can collect uh, th throughout the course of the game different components for your lightsaber, and so you can change. The, just the end of the lightsaber or the middle part the grip all of that yes blade color at a certain point and so kind of it's kind of the same yeah. thing where you with the lightsaber you can look at it and go okay well i really like this one here this one there that there and now that lightsaber becomes your, your own, own yep. lightsaber and it lets you show your own personality playing through through yes. your game so i think that's that's a really good uh incorporation for the last of us too yeah <laughs> Last of Us 2 also at this point because um, of the fact that so many other games integrate it. Why not? Yeah. Why not have it in there? But I would also like to have that consistency where if there's a cutscene, I don't go back to default yeah. attire, you know? So, uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of, you know, it's like you can't have it all, yeah. but with Naughty Dog, when they do something, they, they do it. They want to make sure they do it right the yeah. first time. So, yeah, those are my five features. All right. So... Luckily, my fifth one ties us into segment number two anyway. Okay. So my last thing, um, there's a, there, so there's a video game, another Star Wars game, uh, games, um, well, not a lot of Star Wars games actually. So you have Knights of the Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic 2, and even The Force Unleashed to a degree. What I'm, in, what I, I'm interested in potentially seeing is an alignment, uh, system in there. Slash like an alternate ending playout. So basically, what I mean by this is that throughout the course of the game, you make decisions. Okay. And they inspire your mindset by the time you get to the end of the game. Because we're, we've got Ellie, the, the, the first trailer when she's playing the guitar, and she looks up and she says, 
I'm going to kill every last one of them. And you can feel the, yes. the venom in her voice. Yeah. And then you have the <laughs> scene where she runs into Joel and he says, you really thought I was going to let you do this on your own? Um, it's sort of like a, I'm not going to let you do this by yourself, voice of reason kind of thing. And so I think playing through, if there's little uh, like decision moments throughout the plot that inspire whether you go down the path of pure vengeance or sort of the, I'm doing what I have to do for the people that I love. Yeah. You got kind of two ways to go that uh, educates how the game ends for you. Okay. Now, I'm only thinking in that situation like a two ending thing because, for example, with the Force Unleashed video game, the first one, uh, when you get to the very end, you get uh, the choice. And it, it it's very clear on the screen which way you go. I don't need this on the nose. Yeah. But it's very clear. You either go toward the Emperor or you go toward Darth Vader. And if you go toward Darth Vader, that's the bad guy ending. Right. And if you go toward the Emperor, it's the good guy ending. Okay. If you go to the bad guy ending, you kill Darth Vader, and then the Emperor brings a starship down on you, and you become his new apprentice. And the good guy ending, uh, your character dies. <laughs> But you save the people who inspire the rebellion, thus sending the uh, events of Star Wars into motion. Yeah. And so I think having that sort of, of contrast where Ellie either ends up happy because she hasn't given into her hatred and her, her vengeance, or you've got one where she gives into it and she just, for lack of a better term, things up yeah. uh, for everybody... Um, I think that that then gives you two things, to, two paths to go down yeah. for this game as well. Do I need that? <coughs> no, because I didn't need that after the first one. I was very content with that ambiguous ending. <laughs> now, do I want to necessarily see an ambiguous an ending on this one? Not really. I want kind of a conclusive ending to the second game. Right, yeah. Because I don't... As much as I love the, the these games... The more we make, the more we're risking that one's going to turn out subpar. Yes. So I don't need a Last of Us 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. So You don't hoping... want it becoming a parody of itself. Correct. I just want like a nice story. We care about these characters. We want them to, to have um, their cake and eat it too, for lack of a better term. <laughs> But I think if you want to do, like, an alternate ending branch off thing where you, you can kind... So basically, like, with the first one, do we shoot Marlene or do we not? What happens? Uh, she gets shot. In no, the I'm, 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 I'm saying like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like you, you've got the two, two directions you could go with it. Do we? Sh I think. I think that's you, interesting. That's interesting. Like, give Ellie off to her. Like, okay, do the surgery, and you can even have that same cutscene. Yeah. But Ellie's not in the backseat. He's just driving alone. Or if you do choose to shoot Marlene, yeah, game, game plays out with it. how it played exactly. out. Exactly. Okay. Very interesting. I like that. Um, I I think last time I made the comment about how you know there was a, even though you don't you haven't played a Grand Theft Auto mm. last mission you have three different options. Yeah. The the first two is kind of the the bad guy route. The third one is let's go into business for ourselves yeah. where everybody unites and takes out the bad guy. Um, sorry if I spoiled that for you guys. <laughs> um, it's it's been out for seven eight years at this point so. Um, but no, yeah, because uh, I won't lie. Last of Us, you could play it infinite amount of times. But I won't lie when there is that, that point where I go, you know, if there was like an alternate way of doing things, I wouldn't mind it. Yeah. Just because, yeah, granted, maybe the third or fourth time when you play, you're like, okay, I know what happens when I go this way and I know what happens if I go this way. So at that point, you're kind of immune to it. But to still have that option, you know, it's uh, kind of like Detroit Become Human. Yeah. Now, that's on a greater scale. Yeah. That's very alternative, where every small Everything decision... changes yes. the path of the story. This one is a little bit more yeah. I'm, A I'm, or B. I'm fine with it being <clears throat> relatively li linear yes. with slight variations. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> if I... <clears throat> essentially, like, I imagine it kind of functioning like this a bit. So you're following the path, and then you might, like, maybe you branch off a little bit. Yeah. But it brings you back to the main story by the end of that segment. Yeah. And so you've got one uniform story that's got a little bit of flavor to it. Yes. Um, <coughs> one thing that that reminds me of, we talk about alternating gameplay and alternating uh, various parts of the story. I don't know if you ever tried this, but uh, one time curiosity struck me, and I was like, 
you know, there's the option to have blood and gore either on or off. Now, when you first buy the game, I believe it's on. But if you've ever tried to, to flick that off, various things change in the game. So, for example, when Tess first gets bitten, she knocks the infected down and she hits it with a piece of wood and the head just explodes. When you have blood and gore off, she just hits him, the head stays intact, but he dies. Yeah. Um, uh, and also I think when Joel breaks Robert's arm, they cut away from the arm actually breaking. Yeah. So very subtle things that they do in there. Uh, I know in an ideal world, it's like, why would you want the blood and gore off? Cause last of us, it's, it's supposed, it's to, supposed be to be violent. Visceral, yes. Yeah. Uh, but just for the sake, I'm one of those guys where I'm like, you know what? I want to see how I can alternate the game. Even if it's subtle things, I want to see, you know, how I can make a difference. So, uh, if you guys haven't tried to go ahead and try, uh, <coughs> I think that probably affects the first half of the game more than it does the second half, but uh, very small little things where it's like if if there's a if there's a cutscene with a lot of blood, all of a sudden, hey, there's no blood anymore. Yeah. Or there's some blood, you know. So it kind of all alternates the cutscene and the story. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we went through our uh, five features each. Now let's move on to the second half of our segment, where Dan, if you want to intro this, so. Kind of like what I was saying uh, a second ago when we talked about different ways that the game can end. Yes. So we decided to do a little bit of, as I said, fantasy booking. So brainstorming ways that the plot can end given the minimal amount of data, that <laughs> data information, whatever, yeah. that we've got about the story so far. So basically, in summary, what do we know? We know Ellie <laughs> seems to be in love with Dina. It sounds like Dina gets kidnapped and may or may not make it out. I think that's about what we've got. Yes. We don't know if Joel is alive. We don't know if the uh, the boy that she talks to at the little shindig is alive. We saw Tommy at one point. That's about what we got, though. Yeah. Um, so, based on our limited information and just letting our imaginations run wild... Yes. What, what do we got? So, based on the fact that I've got three and you've got one, I feel maybe I should... Start. Yes. Yes. So... Um, I'll go ahead with this one. So, uh, I got progressively more involved as I went through them because then I started to kind of like the, the the juice. That's not a good term. The the no the juice is constructive thing. The to flow, flow, I think, yes, is what yes. what the phrase is. Yeah. So, in the first one, I've got that it turns out Joel's alive. Okay. So Joel's alive in this one, but at the very end. Something happens, he, and he gets infected. Uh-oh. And we're like, oh, God, Joel's going to die. He's going to turn. And this is like a heartbreaking thing for us. But as it starts to seem like it's too late, we deter- we find out that this weird group of people that we don't know a ton about so far, that they actually have a cure. Okay. They've developed a cure. And we have to get our hands on it. We get it. Boom. We pump it into Joel. And now he's uh, he, he's saved. But he's also immune to the virus going forward. So now he and Ellie are on that same playing field. And obviously he's older at this point. Yeah. But uh, then our heroes uh, escape and they go into hiding somewhere new, um, never getting to reveal the cure to the world. So basically this is the only instance of the cure getting used. Okay. Because we've had to now essentially slay these people in order to survive. Yes. And we've used all that we had access to. The sample that we had. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, It seems like uh, maybe this was intentional or unintentional, but it seems like it's a reverse of the second half of the first game, Mm -hmm. where it was Joel, where Ellie was the cure, and Joel was essentially trying to stop it from happening. However, this one seems like Joel is the one infected. Ellie's trying to get the cure, but with, of course, you know, they get it, but kind of like how Joel risked humanity in the first one. Ellie is kind of risking humanity in the second one yeah. because they go, they kill everyone. They use the one sample they got. Well, yeah, okay. and it, and it's sort of turn, it's sort of uh, getting gi- giving it back at yes. that point. Like, okay, well, you you sacrificed uh, humanity. You sacrificed being able to start life anew for me. Yeah, and now I'm gonna return the favor and I'm gonna save your life right now, <coughs> even though we've got the cure and we're gonna get our asses out of here. <laughs> So that that's yes. what my mentality was with that one. Okay. Um, you want me to go into the second one too, and then we'll jump to you, and then okay. we'll come back. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just, do that. Just so that it breaks up a little yes. more evenly. Yes. Do you have any other thoughts on that first one? Um. 
that group I just want to make sure is not the fireflies. It's it's it's, it's a different That's group. my understanding. Okay. I don't believe that these people are fireflies. Okay. I think I think that was established at some point. I just don't think they have a name. Okay. Um All right. Yes. So, going into the second one then. Ellie goes out to find Dina, but Dina is dead. Sad panda. Uh she <clears throat> kills the 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 people that took her initially like this little cluster of them but turns out there's a whole conspiracy out of this group yeah anyway so she goes back to the compound where they lived where dina and tommy and joel were all at and this one's a little more out there but so anyway she comes home and she finds the place just destroyed okay uh and i likened it to uh you ever see the first star wars movie i haven't Uh, okay so in a new hope Luke Skywalker goes out to uh, meet his buddy, and when he, when he comes back from uh, their little misadventures, the house is on fire, and his un- aunt and uncle are, are dead. They're okay. just skeletons out on the front porch at this yeah. point. So basically, she comes back, and the whole place is destroyed a la Star Wars, and she's just like, oh my god, what do I do? What now? There's nothing left here. Yeah. And so that's when she decides to go out on her crusade to hunt these people down and be like, you took literally everything from me I am now the last of basically the I'm the last of us <laughs> and so uh she she gets to like the end the end game of the of the game and she, so she gets to where these these people are and suddenly Tommy and and like a select group of the people from our compound they actually made it out they escaped before the place got torched Okay. And they show up because they've done their own adventure at this point to find these people. And so then they sort of run interference as she gets to whoever's in charge of this whole thing. And uh, that's how we get to our end game. Okay. Is extinguishing the last of these, uh, the last of these people. The last of them. Yep. Um, yeah, no, very, very interesting. Um, it, it seems like... Uh, I I feel like these little uh, subtle hints that they're giving us, like you know, um, something where that guy says, you know, your old man was uh, was whatever. Uh, again, I think you said it last time where we're insinuating that they're that they mean Joel. Yeah. But instead, we're actually talking about Tommy now. Yeah. Because uh, even in the trailer scene, like Tommy was trying to warn her, hey, there's a lot of them. You don't know how much there is. So it seems like there is this, you know, uh, what she had with Joel is kind of you know, coming up with Tommy. So I think that gearing this ending towards a little more towards that, where first game, it's Ellie and Joel. Well, now it's Ellie and Tommy, you know, kind of trying to venture out for themselves and trying to find the culprit who did this. So I think that taking that element, I think that works very well in there, definitely. Um, My ending, you know, I kind of thought about it. I'm like, you know, if you look at (coughs) everything that we have so far... I'm sort of getting a, a, a narrative vibe from the whole thing where it seems like, um, like for example, that part where um, Dina and Ellie have their arms around each other and she's like, I think all these guys should be scared of you. They do the kiss, camera turns into Ellie's head, then turns out to all of a sudden we're now somewhere else. So it seems like it's very narrative where we're here, then we go here, but then we come back here. Yeah. Um, so what I had in and mind... I, and man, if the if the cutscenes are edited like that trailer was, oh my god, this game's going to be gorgeous, but go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> but to add on to that, um, Uncharted 4 is where they actually kind of got that, where the gameplay would mold into the cutscene now, and then would mold out to gameplay. Yeah. So, yeah, but that, that's very subtle with the, with the turning of the camera into the head and then coming very out. Very cinematic. Yes. Um, so I was thinking, you know, um, I don't know what the ending is going to be. You know, Ellie finds, you know, that group. She kills them, whatever. But in my mind, I'm thinking, if I'm going with if Joel was dead here. Mm. But the whole time, we, we didn't know about it. And like we said, it's her psyche. I'm thinking there comes to a point towards the end where... Um, it's almost like, you know, okay, we're in the ending of, you know, Ellie vanquishing the bad guys and whatnot. And all of a sudden you have sort of like, uh, this, 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 uh, part where gameplay goes to a cutscene again. And it is revealed that Ellie is actually the, this whole time as we've been playing as her, she's been telling Joel what's been going on. However, 
because I don't think in a post apocalyptic apocalyptic world there's gonna be you know uh, graveyards. Um, so maybe there's like a makeshift thing where they put like a bunch of rocks on the body and yeah. like maybe plant a cross. So in my mind, I was thinking, what if we have this whole time Ellie kind of talking to Joel at his gravesite, and she's recanting. Yes, she's she's telling, happened. here's what happened, and you know, I got every last one of them. So kind of telling Joel like you know what she's doing, and then she ventures off into you know going with Tommy, and you know, here's what I'm doing, here's what I plan to do, and. I couldn't think of it, but I was thinking, I think there needs to be a throwback to a previous moment. Um, whether, whether she goes back to the conversation that they had where he says, uh, I swear. She goes, okay. Um, I wanted there be to, before she exits the quote-unquote gravesite of Joel, to, to be some kind of a last, uh, sort of like a, a, a one final throwback. To like, as she insinuates, here's what I'm going to do, here's what the future holds for me, kind of throwing that one last sort of Easter egg in there, and then sort of just walking away from the gravesite. That's kind of what I imagine, is that, you know, because like I said, it seems like now everything is very narrative. We're first jumping here, or like when we saw those characters where um, they're slashing, you know, the guts, and yeah. we saw that one uh, very, you know, built-up chick who everyone is insinuating is Ellie's mom. So it seems like we have some stories, some timelines here that may be cross-cut or whatnot. So I was thinking, I'm like, if we can have it sort of be a narrative. And I don't want it to be, you hear Ellie's voice, like, you know, have you ever played Wolfenstein? Yeah. So the parts where, Caroline, watch over me and this and that. I don't want it to be like that where he goes, yeah, Joel, then I went here. I I just, I want the ending to be revealed like that. Like, oh, this whole time she was... Yeah, we're we're just, we're in the story first person all the way until the end and then we we step back and we are at that gravesite and she's recanting it to us. Exactly. And I even had this shot in my mind. I'm like, you can start off with, so you know how the last, uh, the first one concluded with the close-up of her face? You sort of have her looking down and the camera is right in her face, but then we do this slow 360 where the camera slowly turns and then you see the makeshift you know joel's gravesite and then it's like ah uh, okay you kind of it's like so she's talking to the gravesite we establish joel is dead and then she's just kind of you know regurgitating to him here's what the future holds for me you know yeah maybe even like a little line that says you were with me the whole time yeah and that exactly. that's what that's the tie that's, in for why he's there the exactly yep yeah i dig it so my last one Huh? Huh. Is really out there. Okay. So I hope you're ready for this. <coughs> so, the leader of this new enemy group turns out to be somebody we've seen before. Uh oh. It's Riley. <laughs> what? So here's here's my thing. I don't remember exactly how we how we painted the picture of Riley, but I think this would be like oh uh, what wait what in the actual yeah uh, kind of plot twist. So. Le- turns out leader of the group is is Riley and we're years removed from from left behind um and she's actually she's a little disfigured she's a little effed okay. up from the infection but it never really took her she was like half immune okay and so maybe she so so i i don't remember how i'll, I'll be honest i i haven't played left behind okay. in a long time so okay. i don't remember if ellie breaks down that she specifically shot riley or if Riley actually got got dead, or if she just turned. Yeah. But so maybe maybe she sort of turns. Maybe her brain gets a little jacked up, and she like she just dis- disappears. And yeah. so uh, Ellie just uh, just accepts that Riley dead. is dead. Riley yeah. is gone. I did quotes there that Riley is dead. So yeah. the <laughs> Riley I knew is dead. Yes. So anyway, so she's a little disfigured, uh, but she never really converted entirely. But because of the way that the fungus works. It affected her brain in a way where the compassionate components of her brain maybe got eaten up by the fungus. Okay. So that's what makes her such an aggressive... Uh, no remorse. No remorse leader type of figure. And so when it all comes about, you do sort of that like kind of bullshit reveal where she like takes off a hood or she comes out of the shadows and yes. Ellie recognizes her and is like... Riley, yeah, and you have this like emotional struggle within her, yeah, where she now is faced by the fact that her best friend slash potential first love, um, 
is the person who's been causing her all of this strife and yes. killed Dina and potentially killed Joel. And so you have the fact that she has to end up putting Riley out of her misery, misery. finally. Yeah. Uh, amidst all of the all of the weight of this whole situation. Okay. So I think that would be interesting. And I don't know I don't know if fans would necessarily like it. <laughs> but I think it would be uh I think it would be fun. Yeah. You know what's funny is uh, <coughs> I was, again, I, I like I I was desperately trying to think of two other endings. One of my other endings I was thinking, what if we have someone from the past mm -hmm. who we assumed was dead or we we briefly saw and never thought anything of it? <laughs> Um, actually comes back and yeah. winds up becoming a bigger deal in this game. Yeah. Um, for a second, I was even flirting with the idea. I'm like, what if Tommy winds up becoming the one who's in charge of these guys? But then I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't know where where. But it's like Tommy had a secret family. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, yeah, like it, the it could be a thing where he was at one point aligned with them and then he stepped away. Yeah, because I know in the first game they said you know where Joel goes, you know, uh, you were once a part of the Fireflies, and he goes, not anymore. You know, yeah. I'm a, I'm born again. I got a wife now. I'm not a part of that anymore. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of becomes a throwback to okay, so that side kind of took over. Yeah, because um, the the Fireflies basically were just a an insurgent rebellion. They they weren't a bunch of culty murderers. Yeah. So that's why I believe that these people are supposed to be somebody else. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, you know, uh, desperately trying to think of an ending. The funny thing is me trying to think of how I would tie everything together makes me wonder how Naughty Dog is trying to tie everything in together because yeah. as you and I talked about, when you have a game like Last of Us 1, the success that it had, and it, 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 it's one of those things where it takes on a life of its own, essentially. So you think to yourself, you're like, well, if they're bringing it back, where can you go yeah. with story, with characters? How can you, how can you make sure that it stays up there and it is, it it doesn't flop? Yeah. Um. So I guess I let me let me ask you a question. I imagine there has to have been some thorough quality assurance testing at this point yes. to make sure that the story makes sense that that they uh, that it's actually going to be a, a, an engaging story because if these beta beta players that are probably on Naughty Dog's payroll, they probably had people who work there play through already. If they're sitting there going, this is fucking boring, then nobody's gonna, yeah. no one's gonna like the game. Yeah, so hopefully they, they kept it up. Yeah, but my question to you is, do you think that Last of Us 2, when it comes to hype, entertainment value, replay value, um, do you think that Last of Us 2 will either measure up or might even surpass Last of Us 1? I think if they've taken the building blocks from the first one and they've grown it, um, it could. I think it definitely could uh, it surpass the first one as far as replayability goes. Um, the, 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 the big thing that they need to do to be successful, though, is the, the the thing that I think the Nathan Drake games, not, not that they missed the mark on, but they weren't they weren't based on that. They were based on the adventuring aspect yes. of the games. But this was a very very heavily emotional game. Yes. And so it wrote it wrote that. That's what the whole story was built on was yes. the emotional connection to the characters, their struggles, their growth, their coming together. They're basically being misfits who are brought together. Yeah. And I think as long as you maintain that heart, I think for the same reason that people who loved the first Uncharted game stayed along on the journey through the yeah. other three, they're going to they're gonna be fine. They're going to uh, feel engaged. But they do, they do have to stick the landing in some way. Yeah. They either have to have a similar um, bittersweet kind of ending because that was one of the, 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 the most beautiful things about that game to me is that you didn't have every everything tied up real nice with a bow. There was that, like I said, that ambiguity where you're like, okay, well, yeah, he's sort of developed this father fatherly love for her. She's developed this daughterly affection for him. Um, but she was sacrificing herself, and he said, no, I'm yeah. not letting that happen. And so now there's this skeleton in the closet of, okay, so he, he violated her, her will, 
but is she really torn up about it? Like, will would society ever really rebound? Or would we start to go down a darker path where, I mean, as far as we know, Ellie's the only one that's really immune, and we're going to kill her, take the fungus out of her brain or analyze her brain. First of all, no guarantee we're going to get a cure, and even if we do, now what? You can't cure all, all of people with the thing. You'll have three doses in existence, yeah, and then do those get sold off for an excruciating amount of money... Uh, do you start to har- like? Do you start to farm other people? Can you synthetically produce this this cure? You don't know, and so maybe that was the risk that Joel was unwilling to take. Is yeah. I'm not going to let you sacrifice your life for something that's not even a sure thing. Yeah. So as long as we get some sort of bittersweetness uh, to the ending, I think that's what's going to really yeah. sink in for the for the players. I think you and I discussed, uh, not last time, but the time before, I wouldn't even mind if the second game <coughs> picks up right where the first game left off. Yeah. So there's a flashback to the, I swear, okay. And then you flash forward to maybe the, you know, uh, the place where uh, Dina and uh, Ellie were and, you know, they're dancing. Because, um, again, it seems like, uh, I, 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 my fifth time saying it, but it seems like everything right now is very narrative. Yeah. Where we're going from one thing, but there's a backstory here, but then we flash forward here, but then we rewind over here. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's intentional. Maybe they're trying to make sure nobody, you can know, guess can plot. guess what's going yeah. on. Um, going back to your point, we don't even know if uh, when she's saying, please stop, and they're about to shoot someone, we don't even know if it's Dina. Yeah. That's what they're insinuating. That's how the trailer is cut, but we don't know. Um plot twist what if it's joel ah. um but uh but yeah you know i just i think that we're all desperately waiting until may uh all questions will be answered um and i think i agree with you as much as i love the series let's hang back on a last of us three because um yeah the, the, there are certain games where you can get away with it like uncharted that's more adventure. That's more how can we make the player feel they're in a cinematic adventure. Yeah. This one was more story. Yeah. What's with the characters? And, and I, to that regard, I I would almost argue that we care about these characters enough where we want their story to end. We want we want them to get to a point where they aren't constantly being put through torture and t- turmoil. Yeah. And so if we just start to if we're just stretching the damn story out, we're like. Just let Ellie be be okay. Let Joel <laughs> live his life out in peace, and you, we'll there'll start to be a little bit of unrest as we keep going. Like, yeah, um, that's the that's the thing about going off of emotion instead of uh, instead of adventure is with the emotion that's draining on the audience. Yes, you don't want you don't want to fall in love with Joel and Ellie and then just run them into the fucking gr- yeah. run them into the ground, <laughs> um, because you want them to refined a finality you don't again i i'm gonna it's gonna circle back around but you don't want to watch them go through sorrow and and torture and loss <laughs> indefinitely <laughs> yeah so i say last was two put that cap right on the end and call it call okay. it a day i see i i the reason i like your your little cemetery ending is oh yeah that sucks joel joel is joel's dead <coughs> But now we just there's a finality to it still because yeah. it's our journey is done and now I can live my life. Yes, and I think that that, that would be a really nice, like really nice, like I said, bittersweet, bittersweet way to yes. put to put the the conclusion on it instead of being like, oh look, Joel Joel found a wife and Ellie found a wife and uh, <laughs> they, they adopted some random children that they found. <laughs> No, I don't want to. I don't want to mess with that. Yeah. I, I, I like. I like the tonality of that sort of conclusion. Yes. So. Um. Maybe this is something to get into next time. But have you thought about what you would like to potentially see for DLC? Oh. The, I have. I haven't. So this might. Yeah. This might be a thing to go into in the uh, in, in the in, future. In a future episode. But okay. What, what were you gonna say? 
Uh, I just, I don't know if I maybe recall this on some type of comment, but someone brought up the bright idea. Maybe there's a mode, and this is completely separate from the actual main story, where you can sort of customize your own level. Yeah. So you pick a location, I put two clickers here, I put a bloater there, and you're... Sort of like Super Mario Maker, but yeah. The Last of Us, and then I, exactly. what I imagine you can upload that and other people can play through exactly. it. Exactly, yeah, sort of like a create-your-own-level uh, type of mode there, but um, uh, I take it some people might go very crazy with that and put like, give you like three bullets and go, okay, three bloaters, go, you know, <laughs> trying to get you to... <laughs> good, good luck. <laughs> um, no, that would be fun, I'd like that. Yeah, but I, I, again, I think if there is one company that we trust, uh, it's not 2K, um, it's obviously Naughty Dog yeah. to give us a game. I mean, very adm- uh, admirable, you know, this game originally was supposed to be coming out 20, in like 22 days, Yeah, somewhere around sometime, there. Sometime in February. And yeah. It's been postponed three months and... While now the excitement is starting to grow for me again, where I'm getting a little restless, uh, I, I there's still a certain piece about it where I'm like, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna like it when it comes out, or I better. Um, but yeah, no, I'm 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 excited, and I I have full faith that when the game comes out, it even if none of the ideas that we've put on the table here are the things that they went with or things that they added yeah. in, uh, I I I trust that I'm still gonna thoroughly enjoy this game and uh my my one hope is like i said just that we get that get that nice conclusivity to this one because i i don't need the story to keep going because i sure sure as hell don't want to see these guys keep getting put through hell (laughs) yeah yeah definitely agreed um yeah you know uh polish up the game uh because again i would hate to play the game and they go oh you know we would have had that fix when the game was released but we needed more time you know as opposed to polish everything up okay we're settled in okay release date here it is you know purchase it so there you go guys uh we went through a whole bunch of features that we wanted to be featured uh sort of brainstormed a few endings talked very slightly about dlc which might become our topic for next time um always remember save your progress and don't turn off the system we'll see you guys next time